Hey, howdy howdy, it's Jerry. Uh, I recently picked up a ping pong table and a, um, a robot, a robot ping pong pitching machine, which is right here, kind of pitches the balls. And um, the thing is, is before you really get serious about using a, a pitching machine, uh, you gotta get serious about controlling your balls. Uh, no pun intended there. But anyway, to control your balls, you need screens. You can see these screens I made on both sides of the table to keep the balls from rolling all over the garage. Then I also, um, I also made this, uh, this, ball, this, ball picker, this ball picker up here. And so I'm gonna make a couple short videos on how to make this uh, ball picker upper and also how to make these screens so you can save a lot of money and still get the job done. Um, once I get the ping pong machine fired up and I get fired up, then I'll do another video on it. I'm not sure how good this iPong B300 is or not. It seems a little bit inconsistent. I played with it a little bit and yeah, I guess you get what you pay for it. But I'll give it some time to, you know, to, to sell itself to me and we'll see what happens. Anyway, that's it for now. And um, the next phase of this little video is I'm going to show you how I made the, the screens. Okay, uh, this is how I made the screens, okay? I got some um, scrap material. Uh, mine was only um, less than two feet wide and it would have been preferred to have maybe more than three feet or three and a half feet, but I, I made them low because that's the material I had. I would have made them higher if I had different material, but at least you can step over them, okay? But sometimes the balls bounce over them, so it's up to you what height to make these. What I did was, um, the only material you need are you need two of these tees, PVC tees, three quarter inch, and two of these elbows, uh, three quarter inch elbows, and you need about 15 feet or so of three quarter inch PVC. That's all the material you need. And the tool you need is a stapler. Uh, once you cut your your pattern, um, you fold it over. You fold it over so that you can make a tube or a little cave for the PVC pipe to go through. And I, what I did was I just stapled it up. I just ran staples all the way down, okay, to make my tube. And now I'm gonna get some Gorilla tape, some white Gorilla tape, and put that on here, and that'll make it stronger. Um, I don't have a sewing machine, otherwise I just sew them up. That would be my preference. Okay, to assemble it, what you do is uh, this is a five foot length. All of mine are five feet. You slip that, you slip this five footer in the top. You put an elbow on it. Then you put an elbow on there. And you put an elbow on the other end. All right, put an elbow on there. And then, uh, let's see, what do you do now? Okay, here we go. Then you slip this one in here, like that, slip that in there, okay, and then put the T on the bottom, and then you connect a, a foot there, then you come on down, put this little guy in this one here, and uh, do that. Stick that in the elbow there on the top there, and then stick your T in like this, then stick the leg in there, and then flip her over, and we do a leg support there, and a leg support there, and voila! You have a very nice little screen made for significantly less than you can buy it for. On the internet, uh, I think these screens run about 40 bucks a piece. Uh, I made one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I made nine of them for $40. That would have cost me almost $400, I guess, on the internet, you know? I don't know, maybe not that much, but anyway.
My math isn't too good, and I don't have my calculator with me. Anyway, that's how to make, make a screen. Do it yourself. Okay, I'm back. Um, let's. Uh, I'll show you how I made this uh, super duper ping pong ball picker upper machine right here. Uh, works out really good. It came out better than I expected. It's not my idea. I've seen them on videos and I've seen them being sold. Uh, they go for about 40, maybe 50 bucks, you know, and you can make this. It didn't cost me anything. Okay, I had all these materials. I had the, the wire screen. I had the badminton racket. I had the line. And I had the PVC and the one elbow. So it didn't cost me anything to make this $40 picker upper and it works really great. So basically, um, I started with a badminton racket and um, I cut out all the, all the strings and cleared them off from all the holes. And then the first thing I did was bent the, the, the racket, okay, so that you can make a real nice ergonomic shape to it so that you don't have to bend down. All right, that's the whole purpose of this is not having to bend down because when you get old, you don't want to be going like this a hundred times between each play, man, picking up balls. It's no good, you know, I'd rather hit the ball rather than pick it up. So this thing will help a lot. Anyway, I start with this. Uh, make sure you got an aluminum win. If you got a carbon fiber, it'll probably snap. Okay, so you want aluminum um, shaft here so that it's, it can bend and bend it in small increments and don't just bend it in one place but bend it all the way around, kind of bend a real nice shape to it and try not to snap it, right? Once you've got a good bend on it, um, to fit it over a three quarter inch PVC pipe I had to take off the plastic grip and then I had to file down the, the wood, okay, underneath the grip um, so that it could fit right into the PVC real nice and snug. Uh, I don't even have to put a screw or a bolt to retain this to, and keep it together. It's snug, real snug and nice. Okay, the next thing I did was I, I got some line that's small enough to go through the existing holes in the racket. Okay, that's important. Otherwise you can't thread the needle. So you, you, you make, you make um, passes and you knot them off at the ends okay and you skip two holes at least I did on this skip two holes run another line skip two holes come back down tie everything off now what you want is when you're tying your lines you want to make sure that they're tight enough to allow the, the ball to go through but and tight enough to keep the ball from coming back through on its own weight alright so they just pop in when you press down and they stay in there and once once all the balls are inside of here, after you've picked up all your balls, then it's real easy to either pour it back in, you know, to container, or pour it back into your pitching machine. All right, so they roll out of this, this uh, wire real nice. I might end up cutting the wire down in half because I don't think I need to have it this high, but it adds a little bit of weight and it makes it real easy. Another thing is, position your handle this way because then it gives you leverage, okay, versus a handle on this way you're working against, against the weight of the lever, alright, so you want your handle this way. And I don't think I've seen those um, on the manufactured ones out there, maybe they'll look at this and take my, my advice and start making their handles more ergonomic. But uh, theirs are lighter, they use nets, um, which are maybe a little bit more, but I had this out in the garage and what the heck? Done. So I'll show it to you in action here. Uh, let's see. Cut. Okay. As you can see, I've uh, put some balls down on the on the floor, and now I'm going to show you the super duper ping pong ball picker upper in action. Woo! Here we go. Woo! Look at that. Woohoo! Oh yeah. Yes, sirree. No more bending down. This works nice. Three balls at a time. Boom, boom. Get in there. Oh, yeah. I can get in there. Oh, yeah. Here we go. There we go. Get some more. Oh, there's a couple more. There we go. Here we go. Here we go. Woohoo. 
done. And then you can just, oh, you just pour it right on in. There we go. All right, ready for some action. Later. Testing two, testing two, testing two.